everybody and welcome to autumn welcome back to some more pokemon black 2 no healing in battle revenge rainbow wedlock in the last episode we trained up the new pair of trixie and november being our igly buff at the time and our venipede and in the process, we got our Igglybuff to evolve into Jigglypuff, and then we took down all of the Verbank Complex with those two, with a little bit of help from Elusive and Say It, of course. And sadness indeed, our poor little Cacnea Sonora still doesn't have a partner and still has no way of being trained. He's so depressed and sad, he just wants a partner. And it's possible that he gets his partner at the end of this episode. We're really going to hope anyways, because today in this episode, we are taking on the second gym leader of the game already. Five episodes, two gyms. Let's do it. That's how the early game of Black 2 goes. So for those of you that happen to be new to the series while I'm rambling, I suppose we will run back and get the items that you can get now that it's fall or autumn rather, according to the game. It's now July 1st as the time of recording this because in the Unova games, the season changes every month. So June is summer, July is autumn, what's after July? <laughs> August is winter, and then they'll do spring, and then it'll just cycle back through. So we started in Pride Month, we started in a good old summer. It's still the summer in the real world, but it's, it's fall now, at least where I'm from. But yeah, now it's fall in game. So we get these items, which is just ideally the best time of year to start because we can grab this potion and that Pokeball, because that's gonna change the course of this adventure more than any of you will ever know. I'm pretty sure that's all I can get with Autumn for now. There's other stuff, but you need Surf, like down here, I think. Also Shane, he's, he's still chilling in that grass. But, but Bud, you might wanna pick up pick up the pace. He's just gonna sit there until we beat Roxy. But you know what, priorities, right? It's the cat's in the grass. They released the Purloin in this grass, I must find it. And he mumbles to himself as as we continue back in Verbank City <laughs> and do something actually productive because we, we're taking on the second gym, like I said. And this series, if you're new, the level limit of this series is the lowest level of the next gym leader, which is actually only 17. <laughs> That's ridiculous, right? But because of Elusive being an El Lucario, we should be fine. We'll have Sade evolved before we get to take down Roxy, being 17, which is just super ideal. I'm so glad it's not 18. That would be pretty bad, would it not? But I'm, I'm considering not even training up Trixie in November to 17 for this, because I shouldn't need them. And I know you should never do that. I always say train to your level limit. Like, 17's already lower than it should be. I should train to it. But the thing is... I don't see any realm that Sade and Elusive both die. I just don't see it. Elusive's literally immune to the type of the gym, and Sade's there for backup as a duo, and I think we'll have Razor Shell. If we don't get Razor Shell upon evolution, then I might train these two. My thing is, I just don't want to throw a training montage in if I don't have to, and I should be able to defeat the gym with Elusive and Sade. Well, it should be, yeah, should be able to defeat the gym trainers with Elusive and Sade and get them both to 17 in the process. And I won't have to throw a training montage in for you guys. I'd rather start the next episode off with a training montage and train Trixie in November back up to level 7, well, up to 17. And then Sonora, hopefully, fingers crossed, will have a partner because of the mystery eggs that we get to hatch after this gym. And if not, oh, how would I do that, actually? That's right. We wouldn't have the experience here until Castelia. Well, maybe next episode, we would train. Regardless... Let's talk to the champion Megan guy, who he told us his name was Clyde. I deemed him to be Billy. Let's talk to Billy and see what he has to say about this gym. This is a Pokemon gym. Is it? <laughs> and it's also a rock club. The gym leader and the others are practicing inside, but please feel free to challenge all of them. Oh, you'll need to stay hydrated though, of course. Here you go, and he'll give me some fresh water. Hold on, let me take a nice sip of it. I don't want to, I don't want to be rude. There we go. You, know, you always need to be hydrated when you commentate, of course. He's just looking out for karma and me, of course. Anyways, that's it. Yeah, but grass and bug don't work too well against poison. But Steel-type Pokemon are great for this. And Steel-types can't be poisoned either. At least not in this gen. They could with Twin Needle. But I love the music here. P-O-K-E-M-O-N. Pokemon, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's just a glorious gym. I love this. It's so cool. But we need to take down all three of these trainers before we can fight Roxy. I believe we can fight Roxy immediately. 
I'm not entirely sure. I'm not going to test that. I have to fight everybody. And there's only two trainers to take down, so I say why not? Let's get things started with this poor girl. I want to leave with Sade, though, because Sade needs to evolve, like, immediately. Uh, how many Petra Berries did they give me? Because I might as well, like, attach one right now. Because I'll still have, yeah, i still have what I need for the gym. So we'll give Sade a Petra Berry. At least it has the Silk Scarf, since that's who we're going to be mainly fighting with. So... Let's talk to this girl. She's going to be like, I can always be straight and honest with myself whenever I'm playing the guitar or having a Pokemon battle. No trainer music. Whatever. You know, that's that's cool. Maybe there is, and it's just in the right ear. Because whenever I record, what's, what's up? Oh, it's Billy. It's Billy Joe, actually. Not the, the same thing as Billy, of course. Regardless. Whenever I record, I have my headphones in because that's how I record my game audio. But because I still like to be able to hear my surroundings, I don't want to be so involved into the game. Level 15? All right, well, this thing could have rollout, so I want to just get rid of it immediately. And since I'm on the Switch anyways, there's no real reason for Sade to stay in and water gun. Well, hello? What? Okay, I, that's fine. I didn't expect it to do that much. It just kind of like, whenever you switch out and something uses Pursuit, I've been there. I've been there in White 2 specifically. It never feels good. You're always like, whoa, wait. You know, you you goes you go through the stages of grief and you panic a little bit. Screech. I hadn't even considered that. I bet Roxy's Whirlipede has Screech. She has a Whirlipede, right? I'm <laughs> like 99% certain. I'm pretty sure it's Whirlipede, Grimer, and coughing. Grimer being the challenge mode exclusive. Another crit. Elusive is actually insane. I can't believe how much she crits. It's it's just ridiculous. Whatever, we'll switch. Not that coughing can do anything to Elusive, but this will hopefully get Sade and Elusive both to level 16. And I don't know. I want to train, right? But, and I love training montages, but <laughs> training this episode, and then I, I know I'm going to have to train next episode. I just, I don't want to do that to people. Yeah, Sade already is a little weaker. Let's just switch back into Elusive. There's no real reason to fight with Sade, but... One thing I wanted to ask you guys, this is the question of the day, but I'll elaborate a little bit more on it right here. Um, also, in the for questions of the day, I, I'm planning on premiering every single episode of this series. Because I always treat my series as a show, and I think it's something that you guys can all get behind and watch. And, you know, you don't have to come out to all of them. You can always watch them in the future if you want, and after they have premiered, and watch them like a normal video. It's just something that I thought I would do, try it out for the series. But when you answer a question of the day and you're watching a premiere live actually comment it down below like if you answer in the chat i'm not gonna see that in the future i want to be able to like respond to your comment and stuff chat doesn't work the same way so like always make sure you actually comment the question of the day but this question of the day probably is too long to fit on there correctly but it should still make sense if you think about it but what i'm trying to ask is what are there any music tracks that just remind you of something that you hear and it immediately brings you to a place or a game or brings you to an exact moment in your life. For me, there's the Minecraft music. Well, not Minecraft music. There's these Demi Lovato songs I used to listen to a lot as a kid, like Mistake is one of them. And just a lot of her older music. I listened to that a lot when I played Minecraft. So whenever I hear those songs, I'm, I see myself and I feel myself digging in a cave. I've never been able to take myself out of that position, and there's a lot of music tracks that I immediately think of and go, oh my gosh, that game, or this place, and I was wondering if it, like, what are some songs that do that for you guys? So, for me, the training montage last episode, I did a bit of a throwback. The first song of the training montage was actually a song that I used in the very first training montage of Pokemon White 2, which is the game that this is a sequel for. And I thought that was really awesome. It was a nice throwback to those that had watched that series and remembered that song. And whenever I hear that song, I immediately think of nostalgia and my time in the Unova region from White 2. And I can't take myself out of that feeling. I always feel Aspergia City and my Mareep Bartholomew. I feel all of those Pokemon immediately whenever I hear those two songs. Now, the other song that I didn't use, that I did use in that training montage in White 2, I'm going to use here soon. It's actually my favorite song I've ever used on the channel. Like, I listened to it just to listen to it, like an actual song. It's absolutely amazing. And I didn't use that one because everybody's heard that so many times on my channel, and I felt like the other one was more of a vague or a subtle reference, if you will. And I thought I'd save that for another time. But the other one makes me feel like white too you know what i mean but wrong the other song 
I just... I listen to it so much that it doesn't really make me feel like anything. It's just a song to me. But there are so many things. I'm trying to think of some other ones. I can't for the, off the top of my head right now, but I know there's so many things like that. That like, I don't. It's always been something that I've felt, and I was wondering if that's something other people feel too. Like it can be a place, it can be a time in your life, it can be a friend, it can be a game, anything. When the song comes on, you immediately think of this one thing, almost right out of the gate. Also, I was really worried about this gym. Like, I know that sounds ridiculous because like Magnemite can solo this gym, all right? I've, I've done it. <laughs> um, but I was allowed items and that definitely helped. I've been worried about this because I'm not allowed items in this game. I have two levels lower than the actual level limit that you would normally be playing as. And I just worried because it should go perfect, but there's nothing saying that this gym will be a clean sweep. Like, something could go horribly wrong. I don't really remember her team. I, uh, Whirlipede might know Rollout, which, pff, I don't know how the heck I'm supposed to get around that. I mean, maybe Lucario can just tank it. There's a lot of issues, and that's making me want to train Trixie in November, but I'm going to go against it, because if Trixie and November have to come out, I think we would be in a wiping position, and I really don't feel like we're going to wipe. I know that sounds ridiculous, but I just don't think that's going to happen. I think... Elusive and Sade can do this. Now, if it was just Elusive and Sade wasn't her partner, then maybe. But I'm fairly certain that we'll be completely fine. I do want to get these two both to the level limit of 17, though. I'm not going to fight them without being at the level limit. That's just absurd. You know, no matter how cocky I really feel about being able to win this, I still want to play a little bit smart, of course. But I don't want to do a training montage for, like, just a couple of wild battles. So I'm going to get Sade and Elusive to level 17, and I'll be back here in a moment. There's Elusive level 17. And there's Sade level 17. All right, I'm glad I took the Audino route. Just one Audino. And yes, Sade does get Razor Shell at level 17, which is going to be really helpful. Focus Energy Razor Shell might actually be a strat. <laughs> um, We'll try it. Sure, I'll go ahead and get rid of Water Gun. I don't think we're going to need it. Razor Shell is just ridiculously powerful. And with Focus Energy, I believe it's a two-third chance to crit. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty certain. And with Sade hitting level 17, we're gonna have our third evolution of the series. Episode 5, three evolutions. Let's hit it. Sade, our Oshawa, is evolving. And there we have it. Our starter, Oshawa, being Sade, evolved into Duat, which is going to be the edge that we really need Elusive to have for this gym. Elusive having a partner in Sade is just going to make it so we'll be able to take her down, I think, with no problems at all. And I won't have to train Trixie or November. So I'm going to go ahead and heal up at the Pokemon Center, give Sade and Elusive the items that I want them to have for this fight, and I'll meet you guys back in Roxy's gym, where we take on our second gym challenge of this adventure. Pokemon! All right, let's do it. We are in the gym. Roxy's jamming out on stage. They took they took off from the Verbank Complex today to go ahead and be at the gym for me to challenge her, of course. You know, that's normally way that, where they do their late night gigs, even though it's 8 o'clock at night. They made time for me at the gym. Is that just not the sweetest thing of Roxy? Look at her. She just looks like the embodiment of a sweetheart. Totally not. But she's like the knockoff Britney Spears. She's girl, you know, sings. She's she's all about toxic. Which how fitting is that <laughs> to the fact that we have Team Toxic here with Trixie in November. So yeah, I spoiled who I was leading with, but it probably was not much of a surprise. Oops. Anyways, let's get the second gym challenge underway. It's time to fight off against Roxy. Let's get this show on the road. Get ready! I'm gonna knock some sense out of ya! Time for the second gym leader of our Pokemon Black 2, Rainbow Wedlock! Versus Roxy, the poison type gym leader of Verbank City in the Unova region and it's challenge mode. And first up is coughing. It's a poison type and it's level 17 because that's our level limit. The lowest level on her team. Let's go for this elusive. All right, 
This is the second gym I'm getting to fight with this weird level limit rule. Let's hope, even with a Lucario, that we have more in store for this challenge than just this. All right, Elusive, this is a strategy that I came up with literally last minute. I was just gonna brute force it, but now that I'm thinking about it, we need a little bit of strategy on our side or things could get out of control. And because of that, I'm not gonna just lay down the pressure with return. Instead, I'm gonna work ourselves up. Work up, Elusive! Hopefully we can set up the sweeper down and just be completely safe. Although I am worried about Smokescreen. Does it know that move? It doesn't seem to use it right away, but it does not mean that Coughing does not know it. That did four damage without any uh, boost whatsoever. Not that it has any, but that's still kind of scary. I'm really concerned that Coughing knows Smokescreen. If it does, that could be really bad because she does have a Grimer that knows Mud Slap. I think with one workup, I could knock out the Grimer in a single hit. And I don't want to take any damage from the Mud Slap because it can lower my accuracy and it might force Sade to have to fight the Whirlipede. Because of that, I don't want to go for it. But if I don't and I use workup again, it could use Smokescreen and put me in a position where I miss the Grimer anyways. In this state, I think I'm going to take the shot. Trixie or Jigglypuff was able to one-shot a coughing in the Verbank Complex. Well, that was a critical hit. Maybe with workup, Elusive can do the same. All right, Elusive, return! I hope I made the right move. Will it be enough? And it was. With a crit! Elusive! Non-stop! She critical hits like every turn! I don't understand! And next up is her challenge mode exclusive. And that's Grimer. Because of the reason that I mentioned. This Grimer has something to counter Steel-type Pokemon with. In case you happen to catch a Magnemite. Because I doubt the game expected you to get a Riolu and just evolve it. But that option was there. And like I said before, it was the only route out against Charon. And why not use the same route to take out Roxy? Let's do it, Elusive. Return! We're faster, of course. And hopefully, we can take it out in one shot. And we didn't. Oh. What? She just crippled me! Wait! What just happened? Hmm. Okay. This is gonna take some strategy here. This is actually really important. If I switch, I get rid of the workup, which is pretty crucial against Whirlipede. I might have to change my strategy right here on the spot. And I don't like that. But I know all of you are wanting to see more than just elusive takedown gyms right now. I know Sade fought against Charon, and he did fairly well. They tag teamed very well together back then. And I think they might need to do that again. You see, if I stay in, it's just gonna use Mud Slap on me. But Mud Slap could lower Sade's accuracy as well. And Razor Shell's already fairly inaccurate. I need to make my decision here, and it's very important. This is not a one match. In no sense is this over yet. Grimer's gonna use Mud Slap. That's a given. I can't use Return, and I'm not sure if Force Palm will take it out. And even if it does, Return will still be disabled against Whirlipede. And Force Palm is four times resisted. That's not good. And Mud Slap could lower my accuracy. And we could be in a really bad spot. Do I think Force Palm from this stage will take this Grimer out of here? I do. But I'll still be disabled. I can't risk that. Hmm. Maybe the Disable gets lifted after I knock out Grimer. I'm not certain about that. Another thing that I'm considering here is Grimer might actually be healed this turn. It might be in the state that a potion heals. And I know this might be really, really risky, but I'm going to give you guys more of a show than just Elusive. I think she's going to heal this Grimer. And I'm going to take that turn to let Elusive get out of here. Get back, Elusive. I hope I made the right decision. Sade, let's do this. Just a little more, buddy. Please use a potion. Not quite. All right, it's gonna mud slap Sade. So this is gonna lower my accuracy. It doesn't do that much, but it's gonna make Razor Shell much more likely to miss. And it already has a 5% chance to miss. So I'm saying it's probably sitting about 80%, maybe higher, 85%. I have no idea, but focus energy's not worth it. 
Yeah, focus energy is not worth it. It's just going to use Mudslap again, and we'll have more of a chance to miss. We need to hit this thing as fast as we can. And we did. Sade, take this Grimer on out of here. Nice work, buddy. And that's all I'm going to have you do for this fight, because I need Elusive to take that Whirlipede down. Next up is her Ace. I wish Sade could have done more. I would have set up the focus energy and went for it, but I couldn't risk more Mudslap. I hope you guys understand. I'm playing this to win. As much fun as it would be for Sade to take this Whirlipede out, it's far too risky for that right now. All right, Sade, get back. Elusive, it's your time to shine once more. Let's do this. All right, my ace, I guess, versus her ace. Her Whirlipede is up next. It's level 19, and it's a bug poison type. It's not over yet. That is very true. I'm gonna use work up. Yikes. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna use work up. I think that'll be better. I'm not gonna three, I'm, it's gonna take three shots before the work up. I think it'll take two now. So it's gonna be about the same. It does have rollout, which is not good. That's always a guaranteed death unless you resist it. But hopefully Elusive can go ahead and outpower this Whirlipede and take us to victory. We didn't do over half, which frightens me pretty bad actually. But rollout's not doing that much. I think we're fine. Return. Will it be enough? It's a damage range most likely. Not quite, but I think we're fine. We're outspeeding. Rollout's not killing me from this stage. It missed us. I guess you could say we eluded the rollout. And it's going to use Protect. It's stalling the inevitable. That would have been such a cool end. Sorry, <laughs> it's not my fault. Yeah, we eluded the rollout, and we eluded Roxy. See you later, Whirlipede. Yeah, all right. Satan elu Another crit! <laughs> what? It's like she's broken. Like, literally broken. Whatever. Elusive hits level 18. And Satan Elusive brought that one home for us. That's it for Roxy. Yeah, awesome. I thought we were going to hit 19. Wow, she was in the middle of a chorus, apparently. She was just about to get to the good part. You know, <laughs> All right, I'm done. I know that's not actually the lyrics, but it's close enough. Whatever. She's going to talk to herself for a moment. She's like, what are you doing? Losing, Roxy. God, I guess that just means this girl karma is pretty strong. That stinks. I gave it everything I had, and I feel revitalized and refreshed right now. Here, proof that you beat me. All right, we get the toxic badge from Roxy. There we go. It's all about toxic, apparently, and I didn't even use Team Toxic this episode. There we go. Another badge down. All right, and with that, Pokemon up to level 30 will obey even the ones that we get in trades, which means because of how traded evolu traded level obedience works in this game the pokemon from sequel clause will always obey us which is really cool and they'll never ignore our commands and we get the tm for venoshock which is actually really cool that could be pretty useful on november uh she has a plus special attack nature and it's the only poison attack she'll have right now other than poison sting so i suppose We'll go ahead and teach Venoshock. I don't think it'll be worse than... I think it'll be her best move until she gets Poison Tail. Because I think their physical attack's much better than special attack. What do we got here? It's not going to tell me. We don't even have Poison Sting. That's right. I got rid of it. What to do? What to do? Uh, Pursuit's good because it's like super effective. Yeah, I'll get rid of Rock Smash. Pursuit's super effective against Psychic. Which I guess if I absolutely needed it, right? Even though Return will probably always be better. Whatever. All right. There we go. Nobody else can learn Venoshock, I don't think. But we can check it. Sonora, <laughs> why not? <laughs> right, take it. Maybe, maybe you'll get a toxic partner too. No, there's no, no other poison types that I can hatch. I don't think. Anyways, this loser is gonna come at me. He's like, "Hey, you! I felt like you were something special. Come with me to the Pokestar Studios." Uh, how about, how about we not? <laughs> no, <laughs> not gonna do that. Sorry. Sorry to bust your bubbles, but I'm pretty sure everybody in the audience just collectively screamed, YES! Because yeah, I'm not going to the Pokestar Studios. And you might be like, Karm, you have to do the Pokestar Studios to continue. I know, I'm, I'm just not going to make any of you watch it. I'm going to cut it out in the next episode. So, yeah, this episode's fairly short, but it's not over yet. I'm going to hatch our two mystery eggs. I'm so stoked! Because we just took down Roxy, we get to hatch two more mystery eggs. And it's very likely that one of those eggs will be Sonora's partner. Will Sonora finally find love or will he continue to be heartbroken? Maybe he's destined to get a partner in the desert. Team Desert, anybody? Maybe, right? It's possible. Sonora only likes females. So these eggs have to like males and they have to be a female. So 
Would that, well, they have to like a male in some capacity, meaning any or likes males. So, we'll pick an egg. The first egg I pick is going to be the first one that gets priority for Sonora. So, enough stalling. Let's randomly pick our first mystery egg after Roxy and see what it's going to be. So, we have 13 eggs remaining. I'm going to go ahead and pull up random number generator. I was going to do these next episode, but you know, I was like, you guys deserve to get it this episode. It's a short one. So, random number generator. There we go. 1 through 13. Who's excited? I know I am. 12. So, this egg. Yeah, that's 13 eggs, right? I didn't goof yet. 13. Alright, so this is 12. This is the egg that may be paired with Sonora. I'm scared. I don't know what it's going to be. I'm so excited. But if you guys want to know what Pokemon are left, you can check the list in the description. There is a little sheet. And anything except for Cacnea and Igglybuff, because we already hatched those two. So, with that being said... Our first mystery egg after Roxy is gonna be whatever is in this egg. And that Pokemon is going to be, I'll guess, Surskin. Natsu, whoa. Wow, out of the first three eggs, my first two guesses, I got. My first two guesses were Natsu and Cacnea, and in the first three eggs, I got a Natsu and a Cacnea. I'm closer than anybody. <laughs> All right, well, this has to be a female Natsu or it's going to the PC. It is a female Natsu. So, it's possible that this is Sonora's partner. Sonora's like, yes, 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 I love her. And then Natsu's probably sitting there like, nah, nah, I like girls, bro. You know, it's possible. But I need a nickname for Natsu. Whoa, I'm so excited. What could it be? I'm going to go ahead and get a name for this Natsu, and I'll be back in a moment. <laughs> oh, my God, I'm dying. Oh, my God, please, please, please. Please let this Natu like Sonora. I just looked up Natu's Pokedex entry, and I kid you not, it says it picks food from cactus plants, deftly avoiding buds and spines. It seems to skip about to move. I kid you not, I didn't know that when I picked Natu and Cacnea. I first said the first two eggs would be Natu and Cacnea. How fitting would it be if they ended up on a pairing together? And then not only that, but Natu actually picks its food from cactus plants, meaning it would love its partner because it wants its food. Oh my God, I'm dying. All right, birds in the desert. All right, guys, I got a name for this thing. It's based after a bird from the Sonoran Desert, which is what our Cacnea Sonora is named after. And I dislike the name for it for a girl. The other name I was thinking of was Thrasher. There's a curve build Thrasher. Maybe if it was a boy, Natu, but Thrasher doesn't sound too feminine. But I like this one. So we're gonna go ahead and name this Natu. Not E. Flicker. We have a Northern Flicker, the Natu. I love it. Oh my gosh. I'm begging you, please like Sonora. You would love him. He'll give you food, man. Please love him. A gentle nature. I'm not seeing it. It likes females. No! Sonora, I'm so sorry, buddy. I can't believe it. I'm so sorry, buddy. I'm just depressed that would have been the best pairing of all time no. uh, yeah. poor sonora nobody loves him nobody wants to love him even the cat you know what it's like those girls are like i like bigger guys and then like this big guy shows up and was like I think you're so cute. And she's like, that's not my type. You know, that's exactly what it is. Poor Flick. Well, not, no, forget Flicker. I don't like Flicker. She's mean. <laughs> you know what? That's not true. That's her preference. She likes girls. It's fine. It's fine. That's two Pokemon that like girls. You know what, Sonora? We will get you a partner. I promise, bud. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> oh boy all right how we doing today guys now we got a one through 12 we're gonna get 
Sonora a partner. Mark my words. A five. All right. This is five. Sonora, your partner might be in this egg. <laughs> Natsu would have been pretty good, too. I'm kind of sad about that. That would have been a great pairing. Like, actually. Man, I'm pretty certain. Like, I can't think. Ice would have been an issue. Whatever. All right. Please. <laughs> I'm begging you. Sonora and I are collectively begging you. Please. Be a partner. For my little Cacnea. I don't think it's gonna be. I really don't. I think Sonora's gonna have to wait even longer. Poor thing. I love him to death. He's so special. Whatever. He'll, he'll get a partner soon enough. <laughs> my second mystery egg after Roxy is gonna be... Whatever is in this egg. I'm gonna guess Glammeow this time. I don't want Glammeow right now. But who says it'd be paired up with Sonora anyways, right? Oh! That's so good! Ooh! Ooh! That's so good! Oh! Ooh! Be female! <laughs> that would actually be really good, right? Like, I can't think of anything that that would do, yeah, because Cacnea resists electric, resists grass, Ammonite resists fire. Oh, please be female. Oh. <laughs> I wanted to use him so bad. I'm so sad now. So uh, I'm not as sad as Sonora. Let's be real. All right. Dang. Ammonite. That's so cool. Oh, I want to use it. Can we just release Sonora? That's a joke. I swear. It's a joke. Get over yourselves. All right. I'm going to get a name for this Ammonite. I'll be back in a second. All right. I got a name for this thing just off the top of my head. It is once again a cactus, a cactus related nickname. And while I know Sonora is not going to be paired up with this Ammonite, I like the sound of it. I just think it's a cool name. So I'm going to go ahead and name this Ammonite Oasis. So we have Oasis the Ammonite. Now, here's the age old question. Will this Ammonite like Sonora? Let's see if Sonora is just a big fat hypocrite. It's like, nobody will like me because they like the other gender. It's, you know, he's all mad about it. He's just like, it's ridiculous. You know, and then what if he's a hypocrite because this Ammonite likes him, but he's like, nah, nah, nah. You know what I'm saying? All right. Hardy. Which does like males. So, yeah, you're a big fat hypocrite, Sonora. Oasis is like, I like cactus. <laughs> right? Aw. All right, we have a hearty Ammonite. Dang it, oh, that would be such a good pair. You know what? They're all supposed to have pride. They like what they like and they'll have a partner soon enough. Wow, what an end of this episode. So we meet Roxy and Sonora still does not have a partner. He needs a female that loves him, but that's two more mystery eggs that don't go into the party. That's cool. All right, so you're gonna go along with Gushers here, Oasis, next to him in the likes males box. Next to her, it's a, that's a girl, Michelle Loss, right? No, yeah, yeah, yeah okay. So <laughs> with that being said, we got an Ammonite hatched and a Natsu hatched. Flicker would have been so, actually that name kind of sounds messed up. Now that I think about it, you know what? We're, we're, we're not paying attention to that. But in the next episode, <laughs> we're gonna make our way to Castalia City. And we're gonna get Sonora a partner. We're gonna try. There's a lot of places, and I think the desert would be the best place to check first. Because in the desert, that's where Sonora's from. If uh, his desert encounter doesn't like him, <gasps> Mandibuzz Ice. I mean, Mandibuzz would be so cool, right? No, we'll, we'll see. I don't think so, that's not a good idea. They share weakness, we need to go for something else. But. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. We hatch two more mystery eggs. We get two more after Berg and two after every gym, with the final one being after Drayden. So, with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And if you did, a like is appreciated. It helps out a great deal. And if you want to see more Pokemon Weblocks, like Black 2 here, please don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified of future uploads for this series. And if you haven't already, definitely click like. Help us get to the goal on the thumbs up next to the screen. It is much appreciated. And of course, I will see you all next time. Thank you so much for watching. What is your opinion on Sonora? <laughs>